Hi there, welcome to Alpine Bravo. My name is Brendan. This is my channel for all things Microsoft Flight Simulator. In this video, I'll be carrying on with a series of tutorials on the FlySimware Learjet 35A. And this tutorial will be looking at the aircraft fuel systems. The aircraft fuel system has a number of components, tanks, uh, control panels and enunciators and it's most basic and there's a lot more to that in reality um, just the uh, tanks there are five tanks in total there are two wingtip tanks that uh, have uh, 1215 pounds of fuel each although that reduces by 40 pounds if there are recognition lights installed in the tips which there are uh, there are two wing tanks uh, which each uh, can hold up to 1,254 pounds of fuel and the fuselage tank, which consists of two fuel bladders uh, holding a total of 1,340 pounds of fuel uh, and the total usable fuel, 6,238. Inside the cockpit, there are a number of components that go to make up the fuel system and how you manage it. The main one is down here, which is the fuel control panel. So everything on this panel here is to do with fuel control in one way or another. And we'll return to that in a second. Up here on the engine instrument panel, we have a fuel flow gauge here, which will show thousands of pounds per hour once the engines are running. And then there are a number of annunciator lights available uh, on the master caution uh, glare shield annunciator panel. Uh, there are two in sim elements to fuel control. There is this on the EFB, the fuel page and weight and balance page. It's a weight and balance page and the, the bottom two thirds of it are used for uh, indicating, for filling and indicating fuel and center of gravity and you can just adjust uh, use the sliders to set how much fuel you'll uh, you, you want to have in the various tanks and it will fill both wing and both tip tanks at the same time or you can also use the weight and balance screen as per normal in microsoft flight simulator Fuel is state saving, uh, so we'll remember what fuel level you had at the last flight, but a word of caution, the minute you make a change here on the weight and balance page, it'll reset itself to defaults. So if you want to really preserve the state saving, don't use the weight and balance page, use the EFB. Um, you can use the weight and balance page if you want to get really precise uh, fuel inputs, but just as easy to use the sliders here on the EFB. So returning to the fuel control panel, starting at the left and working our way across, we have a fuel quantity gauge and a selector dial here. And as you change position, it will show the fuel in each of the selected tanks and the final position will show you the total fuel on board. We have a fuel counter which will read up to 9,000 you know that will show the amount of fuel burned uh, by both engines and you can reset it to zero by pressing that button there. We have a left and right switch for the jet pumps, left and right switch for the standby pumps an on off switch for the fuel jettison system for jettisoning fuel from the tip tanks. We then have a cross flow valve switch and that will open a cross fold valve between the left and right wing tanks. And then a transfer fill switch for the fuselage tank and this is used to pump fuel from the fuselage tanks into the wing or vice versa. So you use the transfer position to pump it into the wing, 
but if you want to fill the fuselage tank you would use the fill position but that would normally only be done on the ground and uh, just while we're on that fueling of the aircraft is always done through the wingtip uh, tanks and there are left and right filler caps and from the wingtip tanks the fuel will then flow into the wing by gravity however if you need to get the fuel from then the wing uh, into the fuselage tank and that's when you would use the fill function here which will turn on a pump open up uh, the cross flow valve and um, allow fuel to flow from the wing into the fuselage tank as I say not an operation normally performed in the air unless you had some center of gravity issue that meant that you needed to get some more weight aft in flight fuel is always taken by the left engine from the left wing tank and the right engine from the right wing tank the the, the, the engines cannot draw fuel from the opposite wing uh, so they're largely independent systems however there is a cross flow valve here which is you here and you can use that if there is a fuel imbalance situation so you're operating on a single engine um, so what you can do is you can open that valve there and then if say our left wing had more fuel in it than the right wing because we were only running the right engine had less fuel you would then turn on the left standby pump with the cross flow valve open and then that will transfer fuel from the left wing to the right wing and that would need to be monitored uh, carefully through the fuel selector gauge here to make sure that you then don't go too far and end up with an imbalance in the other wing. Fuel will, as I already mentioned, flow by gravity from the tip tanks into the wing. So it's not unusual if you, when you're topping up the aircraft via the EFB or the weight and balance screen to see the values start to change because that's fuel flowing from the tip to the wing. So say you'd only put in 50% wing and then you decided to put in 100% tip well that will naturally start to flow from the one to the other and let's uh, see that in action so you can see it's starting to go down I set it to, set it to 100 and just gravity is now starting to allow it to flow from the tip to the wing tanks fuel is only drawn by the engines from the wing tanks never directly from the tip tanks so fuel will always be consumed from the wings tanks first and the sequence would be wing tanks then tip tanks uh, and then fuselage tank but the fuel will not go from the fuselage tank to the wing tanks uh, automatically if you want to do that then you have to engage the fuselage tank uh, transfer pump and that would simply you would make sure that both standby pumps are off because this pump will not energize if those pumps are off uh, on i should say either of those pumps are on uh, make sure that the cross flow valve uh, position is closed as well and then just click that into the transfer position uh, an amber light will come on briefly to indicate that the valve is in transit and then fuel will start to be pumped from the fuselage tank into both wing tanks simultaneously this when you operate it automatically opens a valve in the fuel manifold which is why you don't need to have that you don't need to set this open on this model and some models there's a gravity line feed as well for the fuselage tank that's not present in this model so it's good advice that if you're on a long flight and you've required to take uh, fuel in your fuselage tank um, to start to transfer that to the wing tanks in good time but there's no point in doing that until 
Uh, well, it won't happen until all the fuel in the tip tanks has been consumed and you've got about mm, 700 pounds or so of fuel in each wing tank because uh, then there is sufficient uh, differential to allow the fuselage tank to start to pump in. It won't, it won't start to top up the wing tanks until there's space in the wing tanks. And once uh, that pumping operation is complete, you should reset the uh, transfer switch to off uh, to preserve the motor. Be careful not to put it in the fill position though, uh, because then you'll start sucking fuel out of your wing tanks because fuel in the fuselage tank is no good. It's not accessible to the engines uh, without you doing something about it. Obviously, that also has an impact on the center of gravity of the aircraft as well, but not the uh, not a big one. The final control that we have here on the fuel control panel is the fuel jettison. Jettison only occurs from the tip tanks. You won't jettison anything from the wing tanks. When you place that on, it basically eliminates amber and it will start to if it opens a valve and allows fuel to drain out the back of the tip tanks and there's a design that will basically evacuate the entire full tank within about five minutes uh, which will be quicker if you adopt a nose up attitude why would you want to jettison fuel well the landing uh, maximum landing weight is significantly lower than the maximum takeoff weight uh, so if you did take off and you had a full load of fuel and for whatever reason you needed to return or land more quickly um, because of some problem, uh, then you're going to have to either fly around and burn the fuel or much more quick to jettison it. I should also mention the jet pump controls here, uh, left and right. There are four jet pumps in total, one at uh, each tip tank into the wing and then one uh, in the wing itself uh, where the engine at uh, close to where the engine draws the fuel from the wing and jet pumps uh, are basically non-electrical pumps they use pressure than the venturi effect to achieve fuel pressure uh, basically these should remain on at all times there are some circumstances where you'd want to turn it off but not in any normal operation and you should normally be on if you're starting cold and dark these should be in the on position but you would check to make sure that they are on and remain on and also when the starting an engine uh, the standby pumps will be turned on to provide a fuel boost but that is done automatically by during the engine startup sequence there is no need for you to operate EVD switches these are only used if you're trying to transfer uh, fuel from one wing to the other there are a number of annunciators associated with the fuel system uh, and I'll just um, so we have the low fuel annunciator here and that will uh, that's triggered by float switches in the wing and once a wing tank registers between 400 and 500 pounds of fuel whichever wing reaches that first this warning annunciator will come on and if that comes on then you need to really be thinking about finding somewhere to land or transferring your fuel from your fuselage tank the other warnings that we have here we have a left and right fuel pressure warnings uh, those will come on if uh, fuel pressure drops below 0.25 psi which would normally happen if there was a leak in the uh, fuel line uh, they will go out if pressure is restored to uh, 1 psi or above the wing tanks are equipped with shut off valves as well uh, but those are associated with each of these T handles here so if you were to pull this handle here, that will activate the shutoff valve, preventing fuel from flowing to the engine. Final annunciator I'll mention here is this amber fuel filter. And uh, that will come on if the uh, fuel it senses that the fuel filter has been clogged, or compromised in some way. Uh, there are two fuel filters, one uh, for each engine line. Um, regardless if one of them is blocked this comes on you don't know which um, however that will not 
impede the flow of fuel, there's a bypass. If the filter is clogged, then unfiltered fuel will still flow to the engine. Just turning to some of the other finer points of the system, uh, here we've got a view of the underside of the aircraft, and you can see all these spigots uh, poking out with labels on them. Those are the various drain valves that you'd use uh, in the pre flight to drain out any for fuel sampling and to make sure that there's no uh, condensation or air or anything like that. And venting is achieved. There are two uh, ram air scoots, one for each wing, that uh, vents the system and maintains pressure for the fuel. And it's also worth seeing that the actual motive fuel flow it keeps, you know, creates pressure within the system and allows the jet pumps to operate from the tip tanks and then at the engine supply. It actually comes from the engine itself. So once the engine's uh, up and running, you'll start to get fuel uh, fuel pressure and that's why before the engines have been started you will get low fuel pressure cautions here as we have at the moment um, but then they'll extinguish once uh, for each engine once you get each engine going well that just about wraps up everything i've got to say on the learjet fuel system probably went into quite a lot more depth than i was planning to if you did enjoy the video, don't worry, there are plenty more to come going into all the other different systems. And if you liked it, do please hit like and subscribe for more content. Thank you very much. See you next time.